content providers. In our application, we won't actually use content providers, but still a very common interface that's still used on Android platform that you should be aware of. So mostly it's used for cross-application data exchange on Android platform. And one of the most common examples are calendar data or context data. And for example, the context data is provided by some third party application. It uses content providers to do that. And again, you can use content providers to retrieve it. But its focus lies on cross application data exchange. So reading data, it's quite similar as in using SQLite interface on Android. You specify the address of the data, you use define what kind of fields you would like to retrieve, what are the selection criteria, sorting order, and so on. Saving data, again, it's very similar to SQLite. It uses content values object to persist the data. So you just write data to the content values object, and then you insert the object itself into the provider provided by this getContentResolver method. Behind the scenes, it will probably still use SQLite or some other framework that the developer chose to, but uh, it just provides a unified interface to exchange, to do the data exchange on Android platform. So I would argue that you still use content providers if there is a need to retrieve context data, calendar data, because the interface here is well established. There are lots of examples, lots of documentation. But otherwise, while you can still use it as within an application, data persistence layer, content providers, it's too difficult because the setup here, it's quite extensive and there are some other much better suited frameworks to do that. So for example, if you've covered room and object box, they are just so much easier to work with. And if you are just a new developer, I wouldn't worry about content providers at all because it's just such an old interface that's being used less and less. And in the next video, we're gonna cover Firebase and its use cases.